Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good afternoon, inspired listeners. I'm so happy to be with you here today on Wisdom Wednesdays. And I'm particularly excited about our show today because we are going to be talking about an unbelievably fascinating set of topics, all centered around relationships and the ascension process. In fact, there's so much ground to cover that we are, for the first time, creating a two-part series just to make sure that we cover everything that we need to around this very important topic. But first, I'm Kim Falcon, founder of my spiritual practice, Love First, how fitting for our conversation today, with offices in Richmond, Virginia, and also in Encino, California. If there is anything that I can do to help support you through readings, energy healings, hypnosis, or your own spiritual development, please, please let me know. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. You can find out more about the work that I do and how I can support you on your path at lovefirst.info. I do have a couple of upcoming dates I'd like to share with you and also change in schedules here. I thought I was going to be uh, doing readings at the Edgar Casey Association this Saturday, but that has been rescheduled to Saturday, July 22nd. I will be at their fair doing uh, readings all day in Virginia Beach, and I would love to read for you. I'm also going to be doing readings on Friday, June 30th at the beautiful Alchemist Bookstore in Richmond. I hope to see you there. I do want to give a very special shout out to Mark Lanehart, my co-host of the Intuitive Prospector up there in the great Northwest. I tell you, Mark, I, as you can tell, I miss you already. Technology has gone awry before the show even started without you. <laughs> I'm sure you're laughing, you're laughing listening to this, but you are always missed when you're uh, not with us. I am happy to say that you will be back with us next Wednesday. And if you'd like to learn more about the work that Mark is doing and do some prospecting with him, you can find out more about him and all that he is doing up there in the Seattle area at marklanehart.com. You can also follow us on social media. Um, you can interact with us there, and you can learn more about uh, the upcoming shows that we have. You can share our, your thoughts with us. We love our Inspire community, and we love to get to know each one of you even better. And you can find us on Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Twitter, under Inspire Living Radio, and also Inspired for Us. And if you miss any of our live shows, the beautiful thing about this is you can always listen to our shows on demand on SoundCloud, Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Ohm Times Radio Archives, MarkLaneHart.com, and LoveFirst.info. As you know, every month we do have an inspired affirmation all in place to rewire our thinking. And this month's affirmation is, I love so many things about my life. If you would like to call in and ask our guest today questions, or you've got questions for me today, we'd love to hear from you. This is a topic that we're going to be talking about that oftentimes comes with a whole lot of questions around it. <laughs> 
So um, if you'd like to call in, please feel free to do so. We'd love to hear from you. The number, the call-in number here in the U.S. is 202-570-7057. And without further delay, I am so excited to introduce our guest and expert in the area of ascension and relationships, among other things. Uh, We welcome Lindy Cowling. She is joining us live from the UK. She is all about the divine heart. She is a humanitarian, empathic, and intuitive channel. She's also a registered member of the Association of Natural Medicine in the UK. She's professionally qualified as a medium clairvoyant psychic. She's done some training at the uh, wonderful Arthur Finley College. She's a healer, a university accredited hypnotherapist with 17 years of experience specializing in past life and future life progression, timelining, and an ascension guide into love, specializing in expanding consciousness, the twin flame union, twin flame soulmates, and the new relationship paradigm. She's been nominated and shortlisted for a whole, uh, for industry awards this year. Um, with her contribution of spiritual health and well-being. I love that combination. And she has got an exceptional YouTube channel, which is exactly how I found her myself, where she's expecting to contribute to over a million people's expansion by the end of the year. She's uh, included on all kinds of interviews across uh, different media platforms. We're so happy that she's going to be including Inspired Living to that list. (laughs) And uh, we just welcome Lindy Cowling to Inspired Living today on our show. Thank you so much for joining us, Lindy. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm delighted. I'm so looking forward to the show, and I'm very honored to be asked on. So thank you so much. Oh, my goodness, Lindy. Well, I tell you, I found you on YouTube, and when I started listening to your videos, I um, was just taken in. I mean, I started listening to all of them while I was, you know, just doing household chores or just, you know, driving or where because I just found them so interesting. And the one thing that I want to share with our inspired listeners is that you have a tremendous amount of expertise in this area, and um, I really appreciated the level of detail that you go through in your explanations. And as you um, mentioned in your videos, that all of the information that you share comes from uh, experience, a direct experience, either in your own life or through the work that you've done with, with others. Is that correct? Absolutely. And uh, that's something, thank you so much for mentioning that, because that's what I'm all about, really. I'm very passionate about uh, sharing, teaching, and working from an experiential uh, perspective. I, I feel it's the best way, really, to help people and connect with people if you've experienced many or all of the aspects that you're actually working with people with or talking about. Uh, The reason being, I feel that it gives um, a depth that you cannot achieve otherwise. And it also links people in with that uh, resonant vibration, that frequency. In other words, it takes one to know one. So they recognize um, that frequency in you and it helps me to help them. Yes, and you know, while I know that you have a lot of uh, experience in different areas, uh, hypnotherapy, uh, and uh, you know, along with others, your psychic medium as well. To, today and next week, we are going to be uh, focusing on um, your area of specialty in the area of as- being an ascension guide into love and expanding consciousness. So we're going to be focused on that, and you know, we're going to. We're going to talk in great detail about that, as you do very well, and anybody who's seen you on your YouTube channel will attest to that. I mean, you really kind of leave no question unanswered. <laughs> By the time the video's done, it's like, oh, my gosh. Um, but, um, it's, you know, particularly in this area, you kind of almost do have to have some experience, direct experience yourself, because it's, 
it, it, you otherwise, I mean, it, it's so unique, I should say, I guess, this experience is so unique that you can't, nobody can explain it really, like, unless you feel it yourself and know know what it is, right? Exactly. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah, you've got to really have gone through uh, that process of coming out of the head and into the heart, uh, you know, uh, going through that process of ascension and connecting on whatever entry point you connect in. My entry point was through Twin Flame Union uh, to really be able to understand it uh, because it's not just a question of understanding it. It, it. You get to a point where you become who you truly are and you become the embodiment of that frequency. So that's really the whole purpose of it. So I'm so honored again, you know, to be not only on your show today, but next week because, uh, you know, I laugh as I say it, um, you know, you know, I can talk for England literally. And there, there is so much to say on this tra- on this subject that, you know, we, we could easily fill those shows with it. And, and it's a subject I'm passionate about. And I think, it, you know, people are just so interested in it because so many people are going through this right now. Yes, and uh, not by surprise, Lindy, I've had actually even in my own sessions recently um, many people calling about this topic um, and also uh, coming to me for readings on it as well. And so, of course, I've the first thing I've done is said, well, you must tune in this Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what we're talking about. Now, yeah. we are going to be going to break here in a minute, our first break, but talk to us, you know, you, well, Let's start off by what does ascension mean? What exactly does ascension? Oh, and <laughs> there we go. That's our first break. We are going into break now. We will be returning back in two minutes. So please do stay with us as we continue on uh, in our, our conversation here with our expert guests from the UK and the helping stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. Aloha. My name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. There are many sounds in your daily life. Ones that make you smile. (laughs) Ones that help you relax. And there are some sounds that can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you critical information about emergencies in your area. With updates from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know wherever you are. Learn more at ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Ah, 
And welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our very special guest today, Lindy Cowling, joining us live from the UK. So, Lindy, before we went on our break, I had asked, because we're talking about ascension. So, talk to us about what your understanding of ascension means. Okay. So, ascension is the descension of consciousness from the head running the show down into the portal of the heart. So what do I mean by the head running the show? I mean the elevation of consciousness from the head to the heart where when you have the starting point of the head, the head is influenced by um, your upbringing, society, belief systems, all of those things, um, programming, intentional and non-intentional programming, um, identification with the personality uh, that you believe you are and the life that you're living. And ascension is a raising of frequency and consciousness where you drop from that, let's call it the lower frequency of the head into the heart portal and the heart portal is the gateway, if you like, the gateway to the divinity, uh, the divine aspect, the true aspect of who you truly are. So the aspect of you that is minus um, programming, minus belief systems, minus even identification, it's back to the purity, the absolute pure essence of who you are as a spirit and a soul. And we are in a unique period of time where we now have the opportunity, and in fact it is happening, where people can make this transition from the head to the heart while they are walking around in human bodies. In other words, we don't have to leave the body to do that anymore. We don't have to pass into other dimensions. This is happening while we are walking around. And once people make that transition, and millions are um, into the heart, you begin a whole new ball game, which is really exciting, where basically you begin to find out who you are, you see life and experience life through the eyes of the heart, the feelings of the heart, the ears of the heart, and it's a very exciting um, prospect. I call it, once people hit that entry point and they go into their heart, I call it the 12D blueprint. Um, so you begin at a fourth and fifth dimensional entry point into the heart that's in consciousness and you can go all the way up. And I expect some people in their lifetime will be hitting, you know, ninth dimensional levels, um, you know, certainly in their lifetime. So it's a terribly exciting time. It's, uh, it's not a new thing we've been building towards this for a number of years but what is new is that uh, the few hundred turned into a few thousand and now we're turning into a few million that are actually going through this process and that is increasing every single day well and if we think about the beauty behind what a world might look like with everybody living through their heart is just um, is wonderful um, However, however, and I, I feel like there's a however here, which we're going to be getting <laughs> into, because that transition from the head to the heart is a, is a process there, and uh, there's there's a few things that go into into that process, um, which which I know you're very um, uh, you have a lot of knowledge on, which I think people um, are going to really enjoy learning about. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, so, and I feel like before we get into this conversation, it's kind of important for everybody to be on the same page of definitions so that we're, when you're using these words, people understand from what context you're speaking. Yeah. So we talked about ascension. Now, let's talk a little bit, too, about your, because um, I kind of want to lay the foundation for our listeners here, your background, because you had a very pivotal experience in the way of a twin flame uh, experience that um, helped you through that ascension process. Absolutely. So if you could share with us, that would be great, I think. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it was a life-changing experience, and it has... Um, 
propelled me really through that ascension process. So there are many, many entry points. There are many gateways and many paths you can take into the heart and many paths you can take through ascension. Um, for mine, it was via Twin Flame Union. So let's just define what Twin Flame Union is. Twin Flame Union is meeting an aspect of your own soul within the vehicle of another human being. So for some people listening, that might be mind blowing, but it's the concept that you are not just um, you as uh, a soul in one body experiencing your life or your timeline, but that you are a multidimensional aspect of soul in more than one body experiencing aspects of life, more than one time, more than one dimension, more than one life experience and uh, not, you know, just to be a little bit more mind blowing, it's not necessarily your soul in the aspect of one other human person in that timeline, but can be more than one. Why do I know this? Because I've experienced it. I never teach from anything that I haven't experienced or seen firsthand myself. So what happens is if that is part of your journey and you are faced with an aspect of your own soul in another human body, everything is amplified and speeded up considerably. So instead of it taking years and years to go through that process, it's much more dramatic it can be very very beautiful and magical but as much as it can be beautiful and magical it can be ghastly and uh, it can be very challenging because when you're faced with an aspect of your own soul in another human body in a polarized form i describe it a bit like uh, night and day light and dark hot and cold if you're faced with a polarized version of yourself in another human body it can be very challenging and that's why that is a process in itself the twin flame union um, plays out over a lifetime it's not an overnight thing it plays out over a lifetime it's a lifetime to get that kind of level of connection into a state of balance which is why in reality uh, despite the myths and the fairy tale around the twin flame union, so few actual twin flames are married or under the same roof because it's a polarized form of connection. And it is on a scale of one to 20, there are 19 things that come above that relationship as a priority. Uh, number 20 is the relationship. If you ask me why, it's because twin flame union is an ascension relationship template. In other words, all those that are involved in Twin Flame Union are active service orientated. They put out a frequency a bit like a dolphin and it allows the general population to imprint on the ascension template of Twin Flame Union so that they, the general population, can become fully conscious and start to relate in conscious relationships, a new relationship paradigm is born out of imprinting on the template of Twin Flame Union. So when it happened to me, it was absolutely life changing because I'd already been in the light worker industry for many years. I thought I understood what love was and unconditional love. And I thought there wasn't going to be anything much left to surprise me. And, and I was completely wrong. It turned me on my head. It turned my life inside out. It began my journey into the heart. Uh, you know, it was uh, life changing. It was beautiful, magical, it was like being in a Harry Potter movie. But just like the Harry Potter movies, I had my moments with Voldemort. <laughs> but I was forever, forever changed by it and came out the other side again. And uh, it's an amazing thing. And had I not had that as my entry point, I would not be able to do the work I do. Um, I, I, it's helped me to identify what these relationship connections are, not just Twin Flame Union, but the new form of relationships, Ascensionary Soulmates, Spiritual Catalysts, uh, all of these different categories, conscious relationships that you know are evolving by the week. Uh, it's, it's, I think, really, it's the most pivotal point of development for humanity and the most exciting and the most fast moving is our relationships with other people. 
And so you've touched on all kinds of like very important key points here. So we talk about ascension. Ascension can happen in different ways for people. Um, it can happen on some, on your own or what, in many different ways. But then what we're talking about here is ascension through relationships, specific relationships. Absolutely. And, and your particular entry point into that was through the twin flame experience. Now, I think, you know, there may be some people listening to this and, and, uh, you know, remembering the word ghastly that you see, you yes. know, thinking, <laughs> thinking yes. wait a second, what, where does that word fit into what's supposed to be a very dreamy fairy tale like scenario that people have in their head yeah. about what this means? And uh, while you say that there are some very beautiful aspects of it, there's also some very, uh, what would be fair to say is some very difficult or challenging aspects aspects of it. And it's, you know, and sometimes, you, you, I mean, you, I don't know. you got to be careful what it is you ask for, right? Because I think there's people out there going, what can I do to meet my twin flame? <laughs> well, <laughs> listen to I, the show I, first. <laughs> what, what I would say, what I would say is when people ask that question, if they want a fast track, um, route to their spiritual evolution, if they want to be of service to humanity, ask for a twin flame. If they want a relationship that is all about healing the past or a relationship to move forward into, ask for an ascensionary soulmate or a conscious relationship. Can you have a relationship with the Twin Flame Union? Absolutely. But it is after years of going through that process years of change, uh, years of finding out who you truly are, years of coming into a harmonized state so that you're no longer polarized around each other. And those are the genuine ones that are under the same roof or that, and all of those that are under the same roof are in service to humanity, all those that I genuinely know of, genuinely know of. So it is, um, when you, it was great that you mentioned earlier about the myth and the fantasy. Oh, uh, it's me, I knew I would be here that's our second lead into our second uh, uh, break here stay with us we'll be back in two minutes on inspired listening radio with mark kim and our guest lindy kelly the cutting edge of conscious radio om times radio iom fm have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart. The Intuitive Prospector is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you 
tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. America's service members and veterans are strong, forged out of bravery, sacrifice, and duty. Sometimes reaching out for help can be the most challenging and worthwhile mission of all. When you recognize something isn't right, make the call to the Veterans Crisis Line or Military Crisis Line. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. Welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our guest, Lindy Cowling, joining us from the UK as we talk about uh, is ascension and so much more. So, Lindy, if you'd like to continue with your thoughts uh, where you left off before we went to break, uh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Kim. So, really, basically, um, with, with regards to the Twin Flame Union, uh, I, again, as I say, on a list of 1 to 20, it's not that uh, twin flames can't have a relationship with one another, but they are a, a relationship, uh, a new relationship template for others. Now, now let's listen to the word there, new relationship template. The old way of relations on this planet has not been working for many years. And, and it's been in woeful disarray. And part of the reason twin flame union are one of these uh, new relationship paradigm templates is because part of that arena is breaking down and busting through all our belief systems about what relationships are. So when I say what relationships are, this new relationship paradigm that Twin Flame Union is one of the templates for uh, means that as people activate at that level of consciousness, they can find themselves attracted to people that they would never have normally believed they would be attracted to. So if I, if I backtrack to Twin Flame Union, a high proportion of the people I work with will say, uh, when I met my Twin Flame, I wasn't even attracted to them physically, but something amazing happened. I just looked into their eyes and bam, that, there it was. And they have a massive kundalini awakening. Uh, they have metaphysical or paranormal experiences. Uh, they feel an um, amazing amount of love. Uh, they are telepathic with them. Uh, they remember past lives with them. Uh, they don't even care what packaging that comes in, whether it's male, female, if there's a 20-year age difference, if there's a race difference, if there's religion differences. None of that comes into it. All they feel is is basically the divine love. Yes, um, this can happen not just in Twin Flame Union, which is where the confusion is. This is now starting to happen across the general population in other categories of connection. So Twin Flame Union is, let's not say it's a big one. It's a main ascension template, uh, an act of service template for these relationships to happen for others. But what we're seeing is it's happening across the general population. So you can connect with someone that's a catalyst for your awakening. And you can have many of what I've described with them. Your heart can be going like a train. You can feel all this love. You can experience all of these things with someone that's a catalyst, which, again, can be quite confusing. Um, you can experience it with uh, a soulmate. Uh, you can experience it with any kind of conscious kind of connection where you're connecting with someone on a higher level of frequency or a deeper level of connection. And, and here you can see where the confusion lies, because most people will have this experience for the first time, jump up on the Internet and, and try and make sense of it. And they will stumble across different terms for it. One of the most popular buzzwords of 2016 and 2017 is twin flames. I can quite confidently say, working in that arena for a number of years now, that 80% of all people that find that buzzword aren't twin flames, but that they have imprinted on the twin flame template, and they have started the process of awakening through new conscious relationships. In other words, twin flame has become the popular word that soulmates became years ago. Everybody now wants a twin flame. And it makes me laugh, really, because if they realized what a twin flame was, they'd run for the hills. Right, right. <laughs> what they really want is a soulmate. <laughs> 
Well, and so what would be the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame? So twin flame is same soul in uh, another human body or multiple human bodies. So same soul, same aspect of soul. Um, so it, you're a one soul being, but you're experiencing life through different human bodies. Uh, soulmate is not the same soul. You are two different souls sometimes from the same soul family or soul group, sometimes from two different soul groups. Um, a catalyst, a spiritual catalyst, can be soul family or from the same soul family or a different soul family that connects with you on a frequency higher than your present life has been allowing for, so higher than your present husband or wife can connect with you at that level not necessarily for the purpose of romance, but to awaken you spiritually and start your journey into the heart. Old school soulmates are karmic, old energy uh, connections where you've had history with them before and it is unresolved or unhealed. We're not seeing so much of that now. That is falling away. Ascensionary soulmates, that's my word for new connections that have originally started out as old school soulmates but have evolved to a point in their own evolution where they now connect consciously with one another and there is no longer any karmic baggage on it. Uh, conscious relationships are also in that, in that category, new energy connections where you connect with someone consciously. What do I mean consciously? I mean you connect with them and they see and know who you truly are straight away, heart to heart, soul to soul, spirit to spirit, Regardless of age, race, um, color, um, sexuality, doesn't matter the packaging, you connect with the spirit of that person, the soul of that person, the heart of that person, and you are fully conscious. In other words, without any of that programming, judgments, beliefs on it. If you really ask me what people want, humanity want, everybody wants to connect on that level with someone. Really what everybody wants is to be heard, seen, felt, recognized. Yes, that is beautiful and that's what everybody wants. But on the process, on the way, on that journey, it is very frightening because to be seen and recognized like that is to have you in your most vulnerable, unhidden state. And people don't get there overnight, which is why it's a process. Um, it's a process of months, sometimes years for people to get to a level where they are fully conscious within themselves, fully in a unified state of consciousness within themselves and able to connect with someone who's also in that state to match them. In other words, they're not going to fix something in someone else. They don't need to and they don't need that person to fix it in them. They are a complementary oneness, complements to one another. That is the ultimate. That is twin flame union when it's gone through the whole gamut and come out the other end. That is ascensionary soulmates. That's conscious relationships. That's spiritual catalysts at their best. And that is what is unfolding on this planet, which is so exciting. My goodness. So weird you talk about the twin flame union. The relationship is 20 on the list. Yeah. Some of these other relationships that you're talking about that have used the Twin Flame uh, Union template to come into play, uh, the relationship is then higher on the list? The relationship is at the top, yeah. Because, yippee, yippee. Yeah, yippee, that's what we all want. <laughs> <laughs> the relationship is at the top. And if you ask why is it at the top, because this that's being human. How do we learn? We learn from relations. We have we're always in relations with someone, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's at family, whether it's in marriage, whether it's in partnership. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. So when we're, all these other categories, the relationship aspect is number one, which is why they have so much more of an easier time of it, because they're not swimming against the stream. They're not like a salmon trying to swim up upstream like Twin Flame Union. Um, when we try and grasp relationship first, we fail miserably. Um, we have to learn the hard way. It's all about service and providing that frequency for others to imprint on. Uh, for everybody else, what, what happens for them is that relationship is the top priority, living it, um, working it, going through it, expanding into it. And let's be, let's be realistic here. At the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. That's what we all want. 
you know, when I first connected in Twin Flame Union, I didn't ask for a Twin Flame. I didn't know what a Twin Flame was. It kind of knocked me for six. When I look back now, of course, I wanted what everybody else wanted. You know, I wanted uh, what was then the love of my life, you know, to be with me as the love of my life. Um, you know, it was a very tough journey to realize that the likelihood of, of getting that was like sand falling through your fingers. Now, when I look back, it's not painful anymore. It was terribly painful at the time uh, because I've come such a long way now that I, I am now in the category where I'm heading towards conscious relationships. In other words, part of my reason for being part of Twin Flame Union has in, in, in a way done and I'm now moving forward and looking forward to stepping into conscious relationships with people because that's where I'm going. Um, and I think really in, you know, in terms of your own evolution, it's, it's very easy to get tangled up and get stuck. And I got stuck. You know, I got stuck into Inflame Union for a long time in that suffering and that loss and that polarization. And it was a long journey for me before I realized, actually, I have a choice in this and I can either keep going forward. Or I'm just going to go round and round in circles here. And once I made that decision, I very quickly went into the heart. I continued going up and things have got better and better and better. And it's helped me in my work. You know, I'm, I'm seeing evidence of this across the general population. And I work with most countries of the world now. There's only one or two I don't have clients in now. So... It's so exciting because it gives me a picture, a global picture of what's going on. And regardless of those belief systems in those countries, the cultures or what people are up against, they are still experiencing things in this way. So we've, in, in other words, um, this ascension thing doesn't hang in the balance. It's already happening. It's happened. And there's nothing going to stop it. So what we're talking about here now is we're going to become commonplace, not only for us, most definitely for our children. Our children won't connect in the old way that we did, boy meets girl or girl meets girl or boy meets boy. On that physical attraction, they will connect in the way I'm describing. And we'll all get to view the world through the lens of the heart, the way I'm describing here, which makes a very different world that we'll be living in. You know, the world, the outer world changes because our inner world changes. And that is our last lead into our uh, break here. Stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes as we continue our conversation with Lindy Cowling on uh, the different levels of relationships that we're starting to see come into the world. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Home Time Radio. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim and our guest, Lindy Cowling. So, Lindy, we were talking about these, what can be very beautiful relationships. But I've got a question for you on this, because you said earlier, you know, Goodness gracious, I didn't ask for this twin flame connection here and to have my life turned upside down. Um, but is this something that we, 
uh, like soul contracts that we have in place with others when we come into this lifetime, what be it whether they're catalysts or ascensionary relationships. I mean, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So on a personality level, it was the last thing I was looking for, and I didn't even know what a twin flame was. But certainly on a soul level, this would have been pre-planned and orchestrated with military precision right down to the last minute. So absolutely, there are no mistakes in activating a twin flame union, and there are no mistakes in activating a spiritual catalyst, a soulmate, an ascensionary soulmate, or any of the other categories, a conscious relationship. There's no mistakes there. Really, what the bottom line is, is is it's all about the journey into the heart. And I really didn't understand what that was until I began to go through that process. And it's a journey that never ends. It's not like you get into the heart and then that's it, it's finished. You keep expanding, your rate of consciousness keeps going up. And what happens is it's the biggest internal revolution that you'll ever go through. And it gets you really a 360 degree turn about where you view the world in a different way, you see it in a different way, in all the best possible ways, I mean, regardless of what's going on around you and in the general world. And as you come into that, um, into the heart and you start um, accessing that, it comes with all sorts of goodies. Uh, It comes with the ability to create. So the the ability to create, uh, creation is an octave above Uh, manifestation so you're able to create from um, the heart uh, from a frequency of joy childlike joy and happiness and there are all kind of byproducts that come with it one of the byproducts is as you start putting out that frequency because you're in your heart the population around you your immediate family your colleagues at work the town you live in the city, the country you live in, you're putting out a sound again like a dolphin, that kind of frequency. And what it does is people can hear that frequency beyond the level of hearing. They sense it as a feeling in the heart portal, in their heart portal. And basically what you're doing is you're acting as a catalyst for others. So if people are ready, that will start to open them up on their journey. If they're not ready, what it will do is trigger them. What do I mean by trigger them? It means that they will suddenly not like to be around you. Um, This can include immediate family members. They they don't like the frequency you're putting out because it's bringing up stuff that's unresolved in them. I mean, we're seeing this on a worldwide scale at the moment um, all over the world. Uh, And so you can have the opposite effect. And really, it's it's really nothing that you're doing. It, it's what you are. Once you start putting out that frequency, people can either, again, imprint on it and start to wake up themselves, or they'll run for the hills because it's triggering unresolved stuff that they've got already in their energy field or in their timeline. Um, we Again, we see it all over the world. We've all been through it. It's part and parcel of it. All you can do is just be your authentic self. Yes, anyone who says that um, this journey isn't as painful as it is magical, uh, you know, is not telling the truth. Uh, There's a lot of change in this journey. There there is, and we're seeing it worldwide. As people are waking up, we're seeing it politically, we're seeing it in society. Every day, you couldn't even make it up what's happening worldwide at the moment. And some people are afraid of that, but it's all part and parcel of this big wake-up that's going on. People are beginning to see the truth and they're beginning to see the reality of the world because many, many people are now going into their hearts. And what I said earlier is when you go into the heart, uh, you see and experience reality in a, in a higher way, in a different way, and you see the truth of things. So things that you believe to be true, you have the knowing on, you know, and it's just a byproduct of it. So. It's, a, it's an amazing journey. There are many entry points, as you said earlier. It doesn't have to be through the relationship paradigm, but that is the fastest moving, awakening thing going on on this planet. And, and it's affecting all of us in some way. People can awaken, like you said earlier, entirely on their own without an outside stimulus, or they can awaken through a big life event or a big shocking event, you know, a world shocking event that can wake people up. Mm-hmm. But the relationship paradigm is the fastest place we're seeing it develop and the fastest changes and the most exciting 
because it's part of being human. We all interact with people in some way, and so it's the fastest way of getting us onto that track. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know there are no, there's nothing random here. You know, we're all at this point in history at this time, and like I say. I don't, I've, for, for many years I've been on this journey and I, I think personally it's the most exciting time we've ever lived in because we're, we're, we're going to make it this time, you know. We're, we're actually ascending while we're walking around in human form, which is going into our hearts and seeing the world, experiencing the world and our relationships from there. And, you know, a question for you on some of these uh, relationships, Lindy. So, Um, Let's just say then that we have a spiritual connection that comes into play, that one one of which you've talked about where, let's say it's not of the twin flame template, um, but it's one where, you know, the the relationship is higher up on the list, not 20. And we feel then the deepest levels of love through this relationship that we've ever felt before, but yet the person's earthly self, let's say, isn't, isn't so... I don't know, so nice or so, um, is it that you're, why would we choose to have such a profound experience with someone whose earthly self may not be maybe as inviting or welcoming as their spirit is that, you know, um, I don't know if I'm making sense there. But. Yeah, absolutely. And it is the most common question that people ask, you know, why would I connect with someone like this or like that, or that is like, quite psychopathic or narcissistic or they're not on board or they don't seem to get it in their personality or they're quite hostile and really it goes back to what I said earlier about these kind of connections blasting through everything we understand about love and connection in every way shape or form Um, and our preconceived ideas that really we can only connect on that level with someone that's you know, walking around angelic and and in a particular form. It is a real shock to the system. And believe me, I've been through what I'm talking about here again. When you connect with someone on that kind of level and it turns out their personality is a full-blown narcissist or very psychopathic, uh, and it's a very common scenario. What I would say here is if anyone listening to this is connected with someone, and I don't care who it is, whether that's Twin Flame Union, Catalyst, Soulmate, Ascensionary Soulmate, whatever, and they do have those personality characteristics, is always put yourself first and consider yourself and your well-being first. I made a catastrophic mistake of staying on the end of that for a very long time because the level of connection I had, I, I was basically spiritual, spiritually bypassing and saying, well, I know what this is. Um, it's this divine connection. Everything else will come in around it. And um, I made a big mistake there, almost a fatal mistake there. And in the end, had to have 20 treatments for severe post-traumatic stress disorder for what I went through emotionally because I kept spiritually going um, woo-woo on it and saying, oh, well, it's this, it's that. Whatever the connection is, if you're involved with someone with those characteristics, walk away. I don't care what it is, you walk away. You always have to consider your well-being and your evolution first. Because if you get caught in that loop, it gets harder and harder to get out of it. People can connect on these levels with all kinds of personalities, prisoners, ex-prisoners, people from all walks of life. And it's the biggest shock. And, And people will say, why would I connect with someone like that that I don't even feel attracted to or I don't like their personality. We assume when we connect this way that it's all about the relationship and it's all about the romance. You can connect with someone in this way and romance not be on the chart at all. It's just to to awaken you, to get you awoken, to get you onto that journey in the heart. So don't make the assumption that it's all about the romance. You can have a relationship with someone that's in friendship, as a work colleague or someone on the perimeters of your life. And like I say, if you're in any of those categories and you're on the receiving end of abuse, you walk away, no matter what you believe it to be, you walk away. Um, I don't pull any punches on that. It's the most common scenario I see across the world. And people hang on in there because they believe, well, it's a divine connection. It will come right in the end. Uh, If it's a divine connection, it will come right in the end. If you look to yourself, and come into a state of balance in yourself and heal yourself. And the biggest and best way to do that is to come away from any abuse that you're experiencing in any of those categories. 
So is this something like, will you say that, and we've only got a few minutes left here, but you were saying earlier that, boy, these are soul uh, agreements that we have in place with other souls, and the level of detail that goes into this agreement is, you know, uh, um, is very detailed. But so, was that included in the in the agreement that the other soul might not be a a, a nice personality type here on Earth, or is uh, that? Yeah, absolutely. From from my point of view, also, had I not experienced what I experienced because I was brought up uh, by a narcissist mother and a psychopath father, had I not connected with a twin flame that was a narcissist of psychopathic tendencies, I would not have gone through a complete revolution, transformation, healed all of that that I came in with, all of that in my family bloodline, come fully into the heart and come into a conscious state. He had to be those personality characteristics for me to do what I did and do the work that I do. And it took me a long time to realize that and to be able to say that when I was going through the pain, the horror, the loss of it and everything else. But yeah, when, we're, when we meet people with those characteristics, it triggers in us all that unresolved stuff in us. And on that note, I can see we've got so much left to talk about. <laughs> I am so glad that we're going to be bringing Lindsay back next week for part two. Stay with us. Continue on this fascinating conversation of ascension uh, through relationships. Uh, And until then, have a beautiful rest of your week, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday. Lots of love to you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you.